Again, it's the most shadow man man in the land taking a stand. You're tuned in to Lamar Aismo and I'm back with another video. So here we go. I think um, that's what I like about these uh, thought videos. There's really no organization to them. We just wander around, like literally I'm wandering around a, a, a state park and we're just talking, uh, conversing. Uh, well, actually I'm doing all the talking, but I know that um, my, my uh, few loyal subscribers and viewers will be talking in the comments section. We covered a lot of ground. Um, and what I want to do in this video is, uh, is um, talk about what I mentioned in the prior video, this situation in Southwest Asia, while the world's uh, worrying about the COVID-19 virus, or not, maybe not the world, but essentially the mainstream media and the alternative media, the truth or industrial complex, they're worried about um, this whole notion of uh, this, this virus, what it's doing to the economy. I've spoken about it in my prior videos because it is, uh, it's one of those, uh, what they hate to use these cliches, it's one of those elephants in the room that you can't ignore. But um, Israel is causing problems in the Golan Heights. They're trying to assassinate uh, Hezbollah leaders and um, Iranian, uh, I don't want to say uh, mercenaries because what they're doing is Iran is taking volunteers from the region and they're defending the Syrian state government and religious minorities and rural heritage sites from destruction. So they're, I guess they're volunteers from... Uh, throughout the region are actually uh, being attacked by the Israelis currently, unfortunately. It, Israel never learns. They're always attacking their neighbors. Uh, you know, now that they, and, and the crazy part, of, and this is how you can tell these people are evil, which which why that interview on um, the uh, Last American Vagabonds channel with the Epstein victim is important because not only are they gross to the uh, people that are from outside of their group that keep company with them in, in their private quarters, they're also definitely gross towards the, the, the regional neighbors because they sabotage and degrade all those countries around them. Even the ones, even countries like Jordan and, and, and um, Jordan and Egypt who have totally prostrated and essentially allowed the Israelis to control them, they're still undermining, sabotaging, and creating problems in those countries, the countries that they have peace treaties with. But outside of that, they're actually physically killing and destroying parts of other countries that have not agreed to kiss their ring. The United States is um, doing what it does best. It's being Rothschild's hammer in the Persian Gulf. Uh, DJ Chump, you know, we have, we've had a lot of bad presidents, but I think, I want to say he's the worst. Um, uh, besides uh, Andrew Jackson, he's probably uh, the worst, uh, the, the genocidal maniac. Um, and let's take it back to George Washington, the uh, Freemason, a world empire builder. According to himself, the man who advocated genocide of the First Nations here that used to inhabit these wooded areas. But um, this guy's the worst, and uh, he actually authorized the U.S. Navy to sink vessels in the Persian. Can you keep this in mind? Say it with me. Persian Gulf. Persian Gulf. It's not the Gulf of Mexico. It's not the straits between Cuba and Florida. It's not the... Um, <laughs> You know, it's not the Erie Canal. It's, it's not the Bering Strait between Russia and Alaska. It's not uh, the area around Hawaii or Guam. Not that we should be, uh, it's, it's that we definitely shouldn't be in Guam, but the Hawaiians didn't want us there either. They had a monarchy that uh, they were, the people, the first people there were okay with their monarchy, but so. 
you know, we're over in the Persian Gulf trying to do Israel's dirty work. And not only them, the Al Saud crime family who are just as, as well, almost as bad as their cousins in Tel Aviv. The, the People forget that the Arabs are Semites as well. And I think in the case of these uh, Salafis, these Persian Gulf monarchies, they're, they're taking their um, their uh, Semitic heritage uh, to the uh, same uh, disgusting bottom line, the, the gutter, along with the Israelis. So both sides are encouraging the United States to destroy itself yet again and get into another multi-trillion dollar war for their sake. Something about the uh, Persians that make the Arabs hate them, I don't know why. Not all the Arabs, by the way. But um, the Salafis of Saudi Arabia, or as we like to call it, Lawrence Arabia, because T.E. Lawrence uh, played a significant role in founding all those vassal states in the Persian Gulf. The British actually played a role of taking Bahrain from Iran. And the United States, unfortunately, has also taken sides in this religious war. They've chosen to, instead of be a fair referee style middleman and look out for the rights of all the religious groups, which would have made a, the United States um, a hero in the region, definitely would have had a more favorable view of not, not you know the people in the region. If the United States war, was an actual fair broker at any point, the region would love the United States, but since it's not, since it's, it's choosing to help oppress, murder, uh, torture, the Shia, but um, also the United States has done a great deal of destroying the uh, various Christian communities in the region. You had a Chaldean church in Iraq that's almost non-existent in Iraq now because the, the United States policy has led to the death of a lot of the, the Chaldean Christians, but not only them, a lot of Orthodox Christians. And um, fortunately for the Armenians, the Russians um, do, a, do a great deal to protect them because a lot of people don't realize this, but along with the uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the uh, Armenian Church is one of the oldest churches, point blank, period. And the U.S. policy does a lot to um, undermine them as well. So for some reason... The United States has chosen to do a ranking system in the region, and, it, and from the looks of it, it's the Israelis first, the Salafi Wahhabi second, and the Sunnis uh, third. When they can oppress the Sunnis, uh, they, they don't mind um, keeping them in a the comfortable third. And by the way, not oppress them in the same way that they oppress, because the United States is doing a lot to um, undermine and destroy and help torture uh, Shia Muslims and Christians uh, again. But for, for some reason, that's, that seems to be the policy. And then you get some people in the uh, mainstream and in the uh, truth or industrial complex known as the alternative media who try to pretend as if this is just a money thing. It's not about the money because, and I've stated this in the past, but it's always worth revisiting because it proves our point. If the United States was doing it strictly for corporate and monetary interests, Iran would be the United States' biggest friend in the region. Iran has a high population when compared to the neighboring hellhole deserts that surround them. It has five times the population of that uh, racist country the size of New Jersey in the Levant, and we know I'm talking about Israel when I say that. Um, but um, if, if the United States was seriously on strictly about the money, Iran could have provided more gold, more oil, not only gold, but other precious metals. Iran's one of the biggest pistachio um, exporters in the world. So agriculturally, mineral-wise, and, and the all-important mineral, that the dollar was based on the petrodollar oil, Israel had none of that. 
Iran has more manpower. They could have used Iran to oppress the region if it was about the money, but it's not. This is a religious war, and the people who control our country are various uh, Luciferian types and um, Hebrews. And, and I think I'm going to do some great society ministry videos tonight. Because let's not forget the biggest devil slash demon of all, Yahweh. Yahweh makes Satan look like a Boy Scout, but I think I'll conclude these uh, Morris-style nature walk videos here. And uh, I want to say thanks for watching, and God willing, I'll see you in the future video.